So basically, I I will talk about the uh, bunch of studies we we and colleagues did in uh, Volcano Island uh, C2C, and um, I wish to thank the Japanese team for inviting us to join the Icona Network, and we look forward and can't wait to start collaborating on doing some field research all together. The Italian team is made by uh, these people, uh, Titi Vizzini, uh, Gianluca Sara and Sandro Aiuta. They are all from the University of Palermo, two ecologists, marine ecologists and, uh, and, and a geochemist, and two colleagues and friends from uh, uh, the Italian Research Council. Fabio Badalamenti and Carlo Cattaneo from the Stazione Zoologica Anton Torn. So I share basically this presentation with them. We are all based in Palermo City, which is quite close to the Aeolian archipelago. And we started working there in 2009, actually. And the year after, uh, Jason published his first paper on nature on CO2C. We invited Jason and Ricardo to, to join us and start uh, working in the Olean archipelago. As you will see, uh, the archipelago is made by seven small islands. All of them are volcanic and is uh, also a world heritage uh, site, the whole uh, archipelago, uh, basically due to the volcanic uh, studies that dated before the 18th century there. Actually, two types of eruption, the Vulcanian from Vulcano Island, the Strombolian from Stromboli Island, um, have been firstly described here, and, have, um, uh, and they, they have been very important for the education of uh, geologists worldwide. This is the main reason it's uh, a UNESCO site. Vulcano uh, Island, the last eruption was uh, more than a century ago, while Stromboli uh, basically erupts every 15 minutes. So maybe 10 minutes ago, we had the last uh, eruption. So it's quite uh, an active place from a volcanic point of view. As you can see, there are many others uh, volcanic uh, sub sub submerged uh, volcanoes. Uh, some are active on, uh, on land. And if you look at the pink and light blue stuff zones here, these are mainly um, uh, structure and sedimentary features of the archipelago, and they are basically showing us uh, some active place and, and the sort of a, a volcanic activity in this place. It was et estimated that there are uh, several hundreds of underwater hydrothermal vents from uh, one meter up to 2.500 meters depth. So it's quite uh, an active area with the, the Aeolian, Aeolian uh, arc, the old Aeolian arc. And as marine ecologists, uh, we, we started from the most uh, shallow, easiest and uh, cheapest to do research uh, in uh, places, which are located in uh, Vulcano Island and Panarea. Island. These two gradients uh, are different. Uh, they're both uh, described from a geochemical point of view uh, in the last years. Uh, the one in Botero Island close to Panarea, uh, Botero Crater close to Panarea, it's a gradient uh, quite narrow. It's basically a, a crater uh, when you have the bulk of uh, CO2 emissions and some uh, diff diffusive, uh, diffusive um, CO2 fields around. And I would say that the gradient is about 50 meters long. Uh, it's uh, quite an easy access place uh, to, to uh, quite an easy uh, access place to, to be. Uh, access is by boat, 
and we worked there and some other colleagues from uh, Stazione Zoologica, University of Bologna and uh, OGS uh, Italy are, are actively working there uh, in the crater of the uh, Bottero. This is how the gradient looks like. So basically large uh, macroalgae, uh, large um, for the Mediterranean standard and this uh, dif diffusive uh, uh, fields with uh, low profile algae. Um, Baia di Levante, uh, it's a larger gradient, it's shallower uh, from 0 0.3 pH to ambient pH, it's about uh, uh, 200 meters long, it's very easy to access, uh, actually it's quite shallow, up to 3-4 meters depth, and uh, access can be made from the, from the coast. This is how the bottom crater, crater look like. So quite impressive, the amount of bubbles. It's uh, variable activity, but usually it's uh, like this at 10 meters depth. And this is the shallow uh, CO2 bubbling site in Baia di Levante in, uh, in uh, Vulcano. And again, if you look at Vulcano, as I told you before, we started in 2009. Uh, we were um, at the very beginning, uh, uh, we started with very few equip equipments with Ricardo and, and Jason. And we basically involved people uh, and local researcher from the University of Palermo, many volcanologists, and uh, started to, to set up uh, a place where to do some research in the field, and also exploiting the Centro Carapezzo, which is a visitor center for uh, uh, volcanology, uh, with a dry lab, a meeting, and a computer room, and accommodation for six people people plus a kitchen, so it was good to, to use this place uh, to do research there for, for the... And the first studies we did, uh, of course, uh, among the first, we were basically on the geochemical characterization of the, of the area. So we basically uh, assessed um, pH, CO2, uh, H2S, and uh, other toxic compounds, and uh, iron, and uh, trace elements in sediments, and these papers uh, have the, showed most of the results of these early studies. Uh, regarding OA research, we use these uh, sensors, uh, the DuraFET and then YSI. We then used a, a CO2 sensor for real-time measurement in, uh, along the SIP. So basically we characterized on different occasions the, the gradient. Uh, this area is quite, I don't know if you can appreciate the, the scale, but this is quite uh, huge, 80,000 uh, microatmosphere CO2 of uh, dissolvent seawater CO2. So it's quite a huge amount of huge con concentration of, uh, of CO2 here. And this is the gradient. And it's useful, this gradient from, let's say, three, 400 meters from the main seep seeping area that is located in shallow, in the shallow zone close to to the beach here, these three stars. And we also used to um, uh, record in real time the PCO2 in ambient and ICO2 sites. And as you can see, the variability of PCO2 is quite uh, different in, in the two places. This is around 400 uh, uh, ppm. This is around uh, uh, eight. 100 ppm, but with a much larger variability. Maybe you can also appreciate the differences between day and night due to photosynthesis and respiration. 
We then reviewed most of these uh, uh, studies, uh, most of the studies made in uh, worldwide, as you can see upstairs, maybe. Marco, please unmute your microphone. We cannot hear you. So Again. Sorry. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, thank you. As you can see in the top of the of this slide, six out of the seven ICONAS research sites were reviewing this paper. These are basically scat scattered pl plots showing seawater carbon chemistry at hydrothermal CO2 ships uh, uh, worldwide. And uh, the one below are uh, saturation indexes for aragonite and calcite. In this paper, we also reviewed gas ge geochemistry, CO2 output, and uh, fluid chemistry, so I invite you, if you're interested in it, to give a look, since uh, if that are available, some of these sites are reported in this late review and could be useful. Uh, regarding the ecology and biology of the, of the uh, uh, Volcano Island, uh, I should say that the Production, the scientific production in the last 10 years was uh, really impressive with almost 60 papers published on, um, on, uh, on OA research in uh, Volcano Island. These were mainly obser observational studies looking at abundance patterns of many different descriptors from macroalgae to fish manipulative and transplant exper experiments, molecular, physiological, behavioral, and ecosystem level uh, experiments. So uh, again, a, a brief uh, review on these topics is reported in this paper published this year in uh, uh, biogeochemistry and also this meta-analysis whose results are quite co consistent with uh, what is seen in other uh, CO2 SIPs. My presentation will focus uh, on uh, three main aspects. In the first uh, part of my presentation, I will uh, present OA effects on reef, reef building species and how this may cascade on uh, ecosystem communities. In the second part, uh, I briefly present some fish behavioral studies. We did uh, looking at behavior of some fish, nesting fish and uh, process uh, along the gradient. And then uh, a couple of slides on uh, how Volcano contributed to put a window on, on the past, looking at uh, likely physiological mechanism underpinning mass extin extinctions and survival survival from mass, uh, mass extinction of the past. Regarding uh, uh, reef building species, my the focus of these experiments is the sky, is dendropoma uh, in the Tyrrhenian Sea where, the, where uh, we work. The species is dendropoma cristatum, is quite a nice uh, species. It basically, it's a gastropod. It lives uh, building up uh, tubular shells. Uh, it can live up to 50 years. And these tubular shells are basically cemented by, um, by a coralline algae, Negonia Lytton Brassica Florida. Uh, and this may, mainly forms vervetted reef platforms, uh, which are quite uh, widespread in subtropical, in some instance tropical areas, but very common in, in, in the warm part of the Mediterranean Sea, as you can see, and in uh, a way. And 
within the Mediterranean Sea, they are quite important because uh, as you may know, the, in, the tidal range is very tiny, only 40 centimeters. So they do represent an enhancement of the inter intertidal, hosting a huge amount of species with also subtidal affinities. So it's considered by a biodiversity. Basically, it is considered a biodiversity of spot with, within the, and an important ecosystem within the Mediterranean. And the ecosystem service they provide with us, we have some examples from the Levantine Basin in, along the Israeli coast and um, um, the um, uh, coast of Lebanon and Syria. Uh, they basically protect costs from erosions, regulate sedi sediment transport uh, and that accumulations. And they, particularly in Israel, they do represent the only, mostly the only rocky substrates of the of the area. Unfortunately, two, two decades ago, they, um, they look like this, they used to look like this with those islands uh, outside the beach. So the whitish part is the, basically the, the Negonionitum Brassica Florida and these small holes are the gastropod. Unfortunately, uh, uh, more than a decade ago, they got, they got extinct, um, and the reason is unknown. And they, the same area did experience uh, intense storms with uh, huge damages to, to the beach. So this is just an example on, on how they can be important to protect uh, costs from erosion. Another pe peculiar characteristics of this species is, is basically that um, they have um, a very low dispersal range and um, a peculiar um, uh, development. Larvae are stored within the maternal shell in egg capsules. As soon as they hatch, they craw crawl out from the maternal shell and uh, crawl for only a few hours to just to find the right place where to set, settle. This is the larvae and this here is the aragonitic, uh, aragonitic uh, disc they use to fix for a SSI life uh, on the substrates. Usually on, um, on Negonitum brassico Florida, sometimes even on uh, uh, adult uh, shells. So the idea was to transplant because some observations we made, we, we found that uh, vermetids were present along the gradient in Vulcano, but their, uh, their abundance were and cover was very, very low in IC2 conditions, so we we started the transplant experiment to understand um, the effects. We focused in the first instance mainly on recruitment. Uh, we um, started with Ricardo and Jason a long-term experiment lasting one, one year, exposing this course along the gradient. And uh, we were able to find re reproduction and um, recruitment of, of this uh, species. Unfortunately, uh, after uh, one year, the number of recruits was, was very low in elevated CO2 low pH conditions. So basically, uh, these species may thrive or survive up to um, minus 0.1 pH, unit pH, pH units. And also we recorded a dramatic dissolution uh, with an increasing amount of dissolution of the, of the shells. As you can see, this is the protocons, protocons. So basically they are protected by the egg, uh, the egg capsules within the maternal shell. But as soon as they grow in uh, low pH conditions, uh, you can see how the, the dissolution occurs. And this is in ambient and uh, uh, normal, let's say normal uh, 
pH conditions. Then with Cinzia Alessi, we, we started an experiment uh, trying to uh, manipulate temperature, basically painting in white and, and, and black uh, these cores. And this gave us the opportunity to, to record a plus two um, degrees uh, temperature, sorry, higher in, uh, in, in the cores, um, in the black cores. And we assessed reproductive success, shell growth and dissolution, metabolic responses of recruits. And this uh, experiment lasted only two, two months. So we recorded the effects basically on after the first round of re reproduction. And the results are here reported. The elevated temperature affected uh, embryo develop development. Recruitment affected was affected by low pH. And um, even 0.2 pH, um, uh, lower 0.2 pH caused shell dissolution significant and significantly affected the shell mineralogy and growth. And the physiology, um, which, which was measured at oxy oxygen uh, consumption of early stage was affected uh, by uh, OA and um, uh, elevated temperature, uh, temperature acting in, in concert. Um, of course, these re results raise uh, concerns about the, um, uh, these species. And so basically, the different experiments we made show, showed us that if uh, CO2 emissions will keep to rise in the next years, these species will uh, uh, have only slim chance to, to recover once uh, they are uh, damaged and um, uh, removed by ocean acidification. So um, we uh, were also interested in uh, looking at at the effects on the on the community, and uh, since ecosystem level studies on OA um, are rapidly uh, were rapidly advancing in that period, we basically tested some processes that uh, could act in this intertidal uh, vermetid reef. Uh, we knew that OA could could affect. Uh, biodiversity shifts by changing the habitat complexity, and that uh, primary produ producers uh, use CO2 as a, as a nutrient and so boost their, their um, abundance. And, um, and this may lead via um, food provisioning to an increased abundance of OA tolerant species, which can cope with uh, OA level. Um, basically with more food. And uh, another uh, abundance model from, from the literature um, showed in Ischia some and uh, in PNG comp compensatory abundance dynamics. Uh, and basically the, the, the fact that OA sensitive species can be compensated by increased abundance of OA tolerant species. Since we were thinking that this, those processes cannot act in isolation, we tested them uh, in a trans transplant experiment along, along the gra gradient. In this experiment, we uh, transplanted the entire uh, vermetid reef community for one year, basically taking core for a pristine area and then moving uh, along, the, along the gradient. And we look at the responses after one, one year. This is what happened. Basically, uh, the vermetic reef complexity did decrease uh, under elevated CO2 conditions. Here you have the pH and the pCO2 level tested uh, and boosted canopy macroalgae. 
And this has led to rapid, let's say, seven, eight months uh, community shift from uh, um, dermatic to macro, macro algae. And of course, to have led also to effects on the associated communities. And as we hypothesized, uh, since many processes were could uh, act, uh, could act uh, in, in, in this uh, experiment, we did find uh, nonlinear responses of the of the community, both for uh, invertebrate abundance and in invertebrate richness. And uh, also looking at the abundance of uh, trophic levels, we found that higher order consumers, basically carnivores and suspension feeders, failed to compensate under uh, elevated CO2. Uh, this kind of response uh, was uh, um, again consistent with some studies, CO2 SIP studies, uh, made in um, PNG and um, on seagrass systems in Vulcano by Titi Bizzini, so similar results. And also CO2 enrichment in increased the abundance of OA tolerant amphipods, uh, but had an opposite effect on uh, intolerant gastropods. So basically we think and this is uh, the same response uh, like Christy Kroeker uh, was in, um, uh, in uh, Ischia Island. So compensatory dynamics. This experiment raised concerns about the future of the intertidal, intertidal vermetal reef ecosystems. And uh, indeed, um, I like the many and complex community effects that can arise from uh, loss of uh, loss of complexity of the um, biogenic species, and also these results may inform uh, uh, decision makers and modelers basically on the more complex community responses occurring uh, on, um, on um, under OA conditions. I go quickly, uh, uh, Lucia, I still have some time. Just quickly, I go for two minutes, Sorry? two minutes. Ah, not, so, a minute. Not, not much, so I quickly go. <laughs> I quickly gloss on some fish behavior studies. We focus on brasses. Okay. This is a, a benthic brasser, um, and the species is Symphodus socellatus. It has a, basically a very um, um, peculiar um, spawning system. It's a simultaneous parasitic spawning. It's quite common in some species. Basically, three uh, males compete for uh, spawning. Uh, we have a nesting male that do nest, do parental care, and do spawns with, pay spawns with females. They are sneakers with basically the same appearance of females. And there are also uh, satellite males or helpers that take a share of fertilizations when the uh, uh, nesting male says yes. Working on behaviors on this uh, species, we characterize the behavioral patterns. Um, we recently um, look at the behavioral patterns showing that parental care activity is reduced under ICO2. The nesting male is uh, quite uh, sedentary during the re reproductive season for three months. And uh, in the gardening activity uh, is the um, the behavioral activity that is uh, really uh, that really decreased under these conditions. Um, basically, uh, they try to do more carting uh, under ICO2, uh, and maybe this is the the reason. I show you 
quickly an experiment we did uh, some years before. This is ICO2 in Vulcano. The nesting male is here. He's basically inviting a, a female in his nest. But as soon as it approached the female for the fertilization, a sneaker came into the nest to fertil fertilize her eggs. And here four different sneakers. This is quite uh, common for the species, but uh, we look, look at this under different CO2 levels. And this is a typical pair spawn of the nesting male. In this case, um, with several females in his nest uh, under ambient conditions. Uh, briefly, we show we show it that uh, they try to do they reduced uh, guarding and try to do more cutting basically because the event of spawning per spawn were lower in ICU2 uh, than ambient conditions while sneak spawns, so the spawning by sneakers were uh, all, almost the same. This worried us about the implica evolutionary implications of this stuff. So we look at the paternity of the nesting male, taking samples and general typing uh, the nesting male and the embryos within nest. But basically um, the mechanism is unknown. He was able to, to fertilize more eggs even than ambient conditions. This is uh, a good news, good news. Another good news is that juveniles are not affected uh, by predator Q. Uh, we did this exposing juveniles to gabazine and, and uh, different treatments in a two-channel choice plume, so a standard method. Uh, and we exposed them to, to the predator. Last uh, slides, uh, the use of CO2 SIPs, in particular, as far as I know, uh, this is quite peculiar for um, uh, Volcano Island, CO2 SIPs may mirror effects of some past mass extinctions. Jason already told us something about that. Uh, in Volcano Island, we noticed that quite close to the main bubbling site, uh, some mollusks uh, leave, but the um, malacologists in their collections since the early 90s um, recorded smaller size of those uh, gastropods living around the CO2 seeps. We are talking about seven, even lower, seven uh, pH. So very, very high dissolution there. And fossil records and studies from paleontologists demonstrate that organisms surviving from Permian and late, Tria and late Triassic uh, mass extinction events were uh, smaller than, um, than those before. And this effect, effect was named uh, li the Lilliput effect. So basically we found this gastropod species to be adapted or at least to survive. Uh, under acidified seawater, but growing 30-40% less, uh, being 30-40% uh, smaller than those found in normal pH conditions. And as you can see on the right, um, they had a higher mass-specific energy consumption under elevated CO2, a lower, but a also a lower wall animal metabolic energy demand. And of course, these physiological changes uh, led us to maintain calcification and repair shell dissolution, but with cost. As you can see, some individuals were uh, had uh, um, their shell completely truncated. Some others did uh, partial repair of this uh, truncation uh, um, calcifying under this, con this condition. So uh, this is just to say that CO2 seeps can also be windows uh, on the past. Uh, I think that's all. I thank you all for listening and I thank all the people uh, here who are friends, collaborators, former students that uh, did help a lot uh, all of us in doing research in, 
in Vulcano and other, other places, other CO2 SIPs. Thank you very much.